one's really big. I don't see anybody on here yet. Okay, it was, it was showing you you hadn't started it last year. No, I'm a, I'm on right. Oh, there we go. Okay, Sandy Sacco's jumping in. Okay, um, I'm just gonna put it to Facebook, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sandy, how you doing? We'll get started in just a second. Okay. <laughs> Waiting for a couple more people to jump on. Hey, Kim. All right, so we will go ahead and get rolling today. Um, so thank you guys for being on um, our 2 p.m. Uh, pivot with PJ. Um, what we're talking about today is a book called Profit First. Okay, um, and so one of the things that's kind of unique about this book is everybody kind of thinks there's a, a roadmap and a way to do it. So if you haven't heard of this book, read this book, picked it up, um, go ahead, download it on Audible. Um, we're going to really dig into chapter one tomorrow. I want to just kind of do like a little bit of a brief overview and what this relates to your business and hopefully what you guys will take away from this because um, you can actually use this in your personal life. So if you guys have ever heard of like uh, Dave Ramsey, for example, um, um, Sue Orsman, they all have these, you know, how, how to gain profit, how to, how to live a profitable life, how to make more money, right? How to pay your bills, how to pay your taxes. So Dave Ramsey has one method where he's got the envelope method as it's called, right? And so you line up your bills and you say, okay, I've got to pay my mortgage this month. So that's $2,000. So you have a mortgage envelope. And you put $2,000 in that mortgage envelope. And then you've got your electricity bill. And your electricity bill is uh, $200 a month. So, you, so once you fill the mortgage envelope with the $2,000, then $200 goes into the electricity envelope. And then you've got your gas and so on and so forth, your groceries. And finally, you've got your entertainment and your savings. Okay? And so what do we, what do we have in our day-to-day -day life? that is going to make sure that we've got enough money to fill all of the envelopes. So that's where our budget comes in, right? And so, you know, my father always told me, you never, you don't wanna live beyond your means. Um, in real estate, we call that living house poor. For example, um, approved to a $600,000 house. Okay, great, grand, wonderful. I could go and I can afford that mortgage payment. And that is the tip top of my pre-approval that I can be at. As a result, maybe I can't go on nice vacations. Maybe I can't go out to dinner as much. Um, maybe I'm really limited on where my spending is. And if, let's say, a vehicle breaks down and I don't have anything saved up because I'm just living paycheck to paycheck, yet I've got this nice $600,000 house. So when we have to budget these things in our life is where we want to understand how much we need to be putting into each envelope and then the savings or the reserves. Now, that works great for that mindset. Yeah, you may be saying, well, PJ, this envelope thing doesn't make any sense to me. I just have a total number. I make sure that number's in the bank account every month. 
as a result. I know all my bills will get paid because everything's auto-drafted. And I really don't worry about anything. I pad it with an extra $100 every month just to make sure. And then at the end of the year, if there's a little bit left over in there, that will go into my savings. I put um, X amount into savings from every paycheck because I get paid a salary, so on and so forth. Okay, and that can work for some people. Uh, Sue Orsman, she does, you know, the breakdown, um, which is really popular, I guess, with college kids, or at least for Generation Y, it was popular with us, that it was, okay, this is your paycheck that comes in, and you break it down percentage-wise as to what percent goes to rent or mortgage, what percent goes towards utilities, and then what percent goes into savings. And so, as real estate agents, that's one of the methods that kind of applies to us because we're not getting a consistent paycheck. And not that we're not getting consistently paid, we're just not getting the same amount every time. It's gonna base off of the, the house that we sell, so on and so forth. So percentages are gonna to need to live in your world as a real estate agent, which I think is really important. And so when we talk about this book, Prof First, we have to then go back and look at your MREA, right? And look at the budget model the 30, 30, 40. So if we want to have 40% profit, that's how we can live a really big life. Now, I was listening to a podcast this weekend. Um, and I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Um, I, I, like, I like listening to money podcasts about how money works. And what he said is he said, you don't realize that because you have cash in your hand, you think you've got money. He said, actually cash is debt. And I didn't really understand the concept at first. And he started to explain that, you know, cash is a, res a reserve note. That's what it says on it, if you look at it. It is not backed by gold like it used to be. And actually, there's a period of time in this country where it's backed by silver. Yet, that's not what a reserve note or a dollar bill is anymore. A dollar bill is technically debt that you owe to the federal government. This is just how you transfer it from here to here. And he said, what a lot of the really wealthy people do is they find out a way instead of, hey, I got paid this amount of debt, and then I go and pay here, pay here, buy this, do that, whatever, and put it back in. So the really wealthy people, what they do is they realize how to get the average individual to take their debt, put it into their debt, and then they carry that debt over into something that's going to grow them more that they give back. Okay, and not give away, give back, yet give back into the government is a form of debt. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys or not. I hope I'm explaining it the right way. So when we look at how we're going to become profitable or how we're going to make more money, you have to think with profit first. So this book is a little bit backwards as to what the thinking used to be in this country. And a lot of people are starting to go and think in this direction, which I think is just really going to help. So again, it's called profit first and really analyzes, okay, how much money do I want to put into my profit or my savings, right? Whatever you guys want to call it. So if I've just got a said number that I want, I want $500 a month profit every single month. Okay. So I take 500 out of my check first and that goes into my savings envelope and I forget about that. That's it. And then I go in and I figure out how to pay for the mortgage, how to pay for these utilities. Maybe I don't need to be having direct TV and I can go get Sling TV for a fourth of the cost or something like that. Where are we going to make our cuts in, in, in our world? And that's going to come down to usually the little extras. Or maybe it's not living in that $600,000 house. Maybe it's saying, great, I'm approved to a $600,000 house, yet I'd rather live in a $300,000 house be debt free of that, and then be able to leverage that property elsewhere. So I'll give you guys a, a quick little example how this has affected my life and where I am is I was never a good saver, okay? I was never really good at saving money, yet I was really good at cutting costs in my life. And so that's why this book resonated so much with me because of kind of the backwards mentality that it took to it as to, okay, listen, I know I've just got to do this and then that's it. And then whatever I've got left over, that's my fun money. Okay. Which probably isn't helping me become a good saver. So when I have extra money and this, I'll take you guys back to when I was a bartender. 
So when I would have extra money, I would know how much cash I would want to kind of keep on me at all times, one to $200 I'd want to keep on me at all times. So if I had more than $200, I had this giant, um, you know, those like display bottles of kettle one. Okay. Yes, I know. I know it. I had one of these bottles sitting in my bedroom and I, I cut a slit in the top of it. And what I would do is whatever I had over $200 in my pocket, I'd fold up and throw in there and forget about it. And I'd fold up and throw in there and forget about it. Or if I had like a really good night at the bar where I made a lot of money, I may take like a hundred dollars and throw it in there. And the thing was, I just forgot about it. This is part of the problem right here is your cell phone. Okay, you guys look at your bank accounts, you, you're monitoring, okay, what do I need to do? How much do I need to do this, that, and the other thing? Problem is we're seeing it every single day, every single day, every single day. And then we see a lot of money in there and we go, oh, you know what? I can go ahead and I can take that money and go and, you know, I deserve it. I need a Ruth Chris dinner tonight. Or I can go and take that money and I can go splurge on something I really don't need, right? And so as a result, we get caught in this trap because we just have this amount of money to hit. Yet, what if we start looking at it differently? So the best area that I found to save my money was to hide it from myself. And that may sound a little backwards to you guys, yet if it gets the same result, do we really care, right? If it gets more money in our pocket, do we really care? So well, what I did to hide money from myself is the first property I bought what I used to do is it was a $1,600 a month mortgage payment, okay? And I was getting $2,300 a month in rent from the two renters that were living in the property. So every single month, I went ahead and instead of paying $1,600 a month, I paid $2,000 a month. The extra $300, I kept in a reserve account. And what I would do is I would build this. Now, I'm paying an extra $400 towards the principal every month. I'm essentially knocking it down by almost, almost doing like a double principal payment a month, basically, is what I was doing. As a result, this extra $300 goes into this separate account and it builds. And then it's $600, and then it's $900, and then it's $1,200, and so on and so forth. And what I would do is I would save up till I had three months worth of rent in there, okay? Or, I'm sorry, three months worth of the mortgage amount in there. Okay. And so once I got to that number, which is $4,800, I just rounded up to five grand. So once that bank account hit $5,000, I kept putting the 300 in the 300 in the 300 in, and then it got to $6,000. I take a thousand of it, leave five grand in there. And I would just make an extra mortgage payment and I'd make an extra mortgage payment and I'd make an extra mortgage payment. Now, the only thing I didn't account for is how well the market was going to do, and this is back in Boston, or just, just north of Boston, a little town called Winchester. Unfortunately, the market did really, really well, and I got hit with capital gains taxes when I went to sell the house 17 years later, okay? Now, it is what it is, yet I could have, if I was, if I'd known better at the time, I could have taken that extra money instead of putting it into the mortgage, put it into something else, like a mutual fund or something else that was gonna grow me more money. Yet I knew that if it was just sitting in my bank account, ooh, look, something shiny, I'm gonna go buy it, right? And that would be the opportunity that I have is to build on that. So we all have to figure out whether it's the envelope method, whether it's the percentage method, whether it's what I'm talking about here with profit first, what is gonna be the best method for your mentality to grow as much money as possible in your bank account. And so as we start to dive into this book over the course of this next week, we'll really see maybe a different approach or maybe something that you've never thought of. The only thing I'm gonna tell you guys is the bold law, okay? You guys have all heard the bold law before. Do what you've always done, you'll get what you always got. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. If you are completely content and happy with where you are right now, great. Keep doing it, okay? Yet if you want maybe an extra couple hundred bucks, maybe an extra couple thousand bucks, you wanna be able to go on a nicer vacation next year, you wanna be able to do a couple of nicer different things, or maybe if you guys, some of you guys know me, I, there's a car that I wanna buy, right? If, if there's one of those things, let's figure out and put what is that dollar amount that we need to do to get to that number, and then we scale it back from there. And we do what, what Keller Williams calls chunk it down.
right? We break it down so I can say, okay, in three years time, I can afford that car. In one year time, I can afford that vacation. And always pack a little bit extra on top because when you're on a vacation or something like that, you want spending to be the last thing. You want to be able to relax. You don't want to be on vacation going, I don't know, can we afford this dinner? This place looks expensive, this, that, and the other thing. No, we've, we've gone ahead and factored in an extra thousand dollars over wherever it needs to be so we can actually relax and and recharge our batteries, so to speak. So when, when we're looking at these numbers, right, if you guys want to make more money, if you want to have more money in your pocket, you got to change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. It's another bold law, okay? Change the way you look at things and things you look at change. What if we stopped looking at, you know, a dollar bill or a $5 bill as, eh, it's just five bucks, eh, it's just this. I was having this conversation with a, a friend of mine the other day, was telling him about this account that I have, um, a savings account um, through a company called uh, Park Avenue Securities. I have a direct pull from my bank account or from my check every month. $250 goes into this every single month. And as a result, it grosses about $5 a month for $4.83 or whatever it is. So it's not breaking the bank, but that's a lot higher. I'm sorry. $5 year to date, excuse me, it was 483 year to date. It's like $1.13 and it increases because there's more money in the account every month, right? Yet it's more than a savings account is yielding me. So it's doing the same thing. Yet the beautiful thing about this is I purposely cannot go and view my account online. I get it. I got a, a letter in the mail once a month updating me where the account is at. So it's out of sight, out of mind. And you know, this is something new that I've just started. Yet now there's over $3,000 in that account just sitting there, okay? And so I've been doing this for a little bit and it's starting to mature and grow. Yet when I do want to go on a nice vacation or when I do want to buy that car or when I do want to buy another house or something like that, that money's there. And it's not right now where I'm going, mm, okay, you know what? I could use that money. And if it was in my bank account, I probably would use that money right now. Okay, I have a rental property that's not rented right now. That costs me money every month. Instead of going and dipping into that fund, I'm figuring it out with the cash I have on hand so that can continue to grow and continue to mature. So I think out of sight, out of mind, for me at least, is one of the most important things. And one of the things that you guys may want to focus on in your world, in your business, to be more profitable. Lastly, not just talking about businesses, what we're going to do this week is we're going to talk about this. We're going to relate it to your personal finances. So a little bit of homework um, for everybody to do is just, just kind of approximate what your monthly costs are going to be. If you're really detail-oriented, you want to say my mortgage is $1,600, my um, average electric bill is $200, my average uh, heat bill right now, it's the summertime or it's getting hotter, so that's going to be less. If you want to go ahead and, and average it all out, that's fine. If you want to just say, listen, I know I need $3,200 a month in order to pay all of my bills. Go from there. Whichever method is fine. Yet what we need to do is we need to understand how the money works so that we can keep more in our pocket or we could go ahead and invest it in other things that are going to gross us more money over time. So um, I know Facebook Live got kicked off for whatever reason, so I apologize to all the guys on Facebook Live. I will try and get that up and working for tomorrow. Um, and we're going to dive into Chapter 1. It's page 11 in Profit First tomorrow. Um, questions, comments, concerns, what do you guys got for me today? Cool, cool. All right, guys, make it an awesome day. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you tomorrow at 2. Bye.